Volkswagen. Did you know Porsche, Lamborghini, Bentley, Bugatti, and Audi are all cars under the Volkswagen banner? The German word Volkswagen translates to the people's car in English. This was exactly the dream that Ferdinand Porsche had envisioned for the car he had designed back in the 1930s. They started from humble beginnings and have expanded to have some of the biggest automobile companies under their wing today, including the ones we mentioned a few seconds ago Porsche, Lamborghini, Bentley, Bugatti, Audi, and Ducati. In this video, we are going to look at the origins of Volkswagen and how all of its ups and downs led to it being one of the most successful automotive companies today. This story dates back to the 1900s with a man named Ferdinand Porsche. Since childhood, Ferdinand had a knack for designing cars. As a teenager, Ferdinand had fashioned the first front wheel driven car. This got him a lot of recognition and awards. Aside from cars, Ferdinand also helped design aircraft engines during the First World War. Ferdinand was highly inspired by Henry Ford in the US, who introduced the Ford Model T, his first gasoline-powered, horseless carriage, the quadricycle, and introduced revolutionary new mass production methods, including large production plants, the use of standardized interchangeable parts, and in 1913, the world's first moving assembly line for cars. Ferdinand wanted to do the same in Europe. He had been working for years on the idea of creating an affordable car that could hold a family and would drive like a real car, not a microcar. What is a microcar, you may be thinking? Back in the day, many automobile companies would create a small two-seater car with an extremely underpowered engine and target this to the average consumer and focus only on selling their higher-end models, the real cars, to the elite. His design was simple. It was a small built car with a rear engine shaped like a beetle for better aerodynamics. Yes indeed, it was Ferdinand Porsche that came up with the design of the car we all know and love today, the Beetle. He tried to pitch this idea to many Europeans but was turned down almost instantly. They practically laughed him out the door each and every time. Fed up by the rejection, Ferdinand decided to open his own company, naming it Porsche. They started out by working on projects for other manufacturers. And once again, Ferdinand could not find anyone to fund his small car project. This was up until a friend of his introduced him to the Chancellor of Germany at the time, Adolf Hitler. Though Hitler never learned to drive, he was very fond of cars. He also created the Autobahn which led to the United States interstate highways. Hitler proposed that any race company that could build a race car for the upcoming Grand Prix event would win a grand cash prize of 250,000 Reichsmark. Ferdinand took up the challenge and his designs completely dominated the 1934 race tournament. This gave him a chance to create three prototype cars for the German government, which led to the creation of the Beetle car. The car companies in Germany at the time didn't want to make this new low-cost car. So Hitler formed a new company run solely by the government just to help out Ferdinand. The first name given to the car was KDF Wagen. KDF stood for Kraft door Freude or Strength through Joy. The Beetle was not designed to look luxurious and sporty. Its main purpose was to be economical. Its top speed wasn't more than 100 kilometers per hour, coming in at the cost of $390, which is equivalent to approximately $6,000 today. At that point, with the help of Hitler's funding, almost 300,000 cars were ready for production. But due to the sudden outbreak of World War II, most of these were converted into Jeep-like cars for the German military instead. Post the war, the car manufacturing factory was almost completely destroyed. Only a small part of it was able to function. This of course drastically slowed down their production. The British military were in charge of this section in Germany. They tried to get their manufacturers to help rebuild a factory, 
Henry Ford, the man who inspired Ferdinand, was approached to buy out the company for free. Unfortunately, the factory was in such a bad state that Ford's advisor turned down the offer completely with just one look at the factory. So the Volkswagen company had to manage everything on their own and slowly rebuild itself. At this point, 73-year-old Ferdinand, arrested, felt as though his dream was far from becoming a reality. The company was now being led by Heinz Nordoff. By 1948, Ferdinand was not working on the Beetle project anymore and started working for the Porsche 356 project instead. This was the start of the Porsche legacy. In 1950, Ferdinand was happy to see the growth of his company and the factories up and running in its full potential. He felt as though he had achieved his target and by the next year, he passed away at the age of 75. In 1950, the Type 2, also called the bus, was introduced. It was also built with an engine in the back of the vehicle. Volkswagen found it very hard to break through with the American market, as at the time, American cars looked much beefier, so the shape and power of the Volkswagen was undermined. Though through advertising, Volkswagen brought people's attention to the fact that at the price of one Jaguar, they could purchase three Volkswagens. Slowly but steadily, as the Americans got a hands-on experience with the car, they instantly started getting more accustomed to it. Eventually, the cars became popular and well-known all over the world. The Beetle later became one of the best-selling cars in history. With the success of their Beetle and the Type 2 bus, Volkswagen had enough bandwidth to acquire Audi by 1965. Things were on a complete high-rise for Volkswagen from here on. As sales slowed down for the Beetle, the company was ready with a completely new range of cars for their customers, the Passat, Golf, and the Polo series. These were also highly popular amongst their customer base and in fact, helped widen their audiences who still weren't very fond of the bug-shaped Beetle. The Golf GTI became very well known amongst the racers and was a car that was highly modified to each person's personal preference. The Type 2 bus also seemed to have many iterations as it slowly started gaining a growing consumer base as well. Families loved taking these minivans on their treks and weekend getaways, since it could be customized to their own individual needs, making many feel as though they were carrying a small part of their home around as they traveled. The Polo was a tuned down version of the Golf, but over iterations, also started looking very similar to its elder brother. So if the Golf was unaffordable, the Polo was the alternative. In 1998, Volkswagen added some of the biggest names to their portfolio, such as Bentley, Lamborghini, and Bugatti. In the 2000s, they also acquired Ducati, Skoda, and Cugario. They ranked number 7 in the 2016 Fortune Global 500. Volkswagen has survived through a long and treacherous path towards victory. Its production units in today's date churn out over 10 million cars per year. Due to their massive scale, they also benefit people by providing job opportunities to over hundreds and thousands of people every month. With this, we come to the end of today's video. If we have to take out some learnings from this, it is to dream big and never give up on it because hard work and perseverance and of course the help of a powerful political leader like uh, Hitler is always the key to success. I hope you found today's video interesting. If so, do hit that like button, comment below and tell us which topic you'd like us to discuss in our next video. If you haven't already, please do subscribe so that you will be the first to be notified when new content is put up. Hope to see you in our next video. Until then, take care.
If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It does wonders for the YouTube algorithm so more people can see our videos and so that you can be notified when we launch our next video. We try and put out at least one new one per week and as you can imagine, the research and editing alone of these type of videos takes us close to 18 hours. So we would really appreciate it if you could also check out our Patreon. For just $1 a month, you can support our work. We produce over 12 videos per month, so that is literally 8 cents per video. Thank you so much and we'll see you at our next unmasking.